Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be talking about the superficial veins uh, near the axilla and talk about how they drain the superficial regions of the brachium and then ultimately uh, merge back into the axillary vein to deliver that blood back into the deeper circulation into the heart. In the previous video, we talked extensively about the axillary artery, and I mentioned that it starts from the subclavian artery, and as soon as that subclavian artery passes over the lateral part of the superior aspect of the first rib, right here, it becomes the axillary artery. In fact, you can kind of see a color change right here. It's more pink where we have the axillary artery, and it's more red with the subclavian artery. So right when it passes over that lateral part, of the superior aspect of the first rib, it changes names, and it becomes the axillary artery. But we're also going to have an axillary vein that travels with the axillary artery. Now, I realize that the axillary vein is technically going up because it's bringing blood back to the heart, but just for the simplicity, let's talk about it in the same way we did the artery. The axillary vein is going to continue down here. It's going to pass underneath pectoralis minor, just like the axillary artery. And when it gets down to the inferior border of teres major, it's going to change names to the basilic vein. In other words, the basilic vein is a superficial vein that's draining the medial aspect of the brachium and the elbow and the forearm. Okay, so when the basilic vein gets up here, really to this inferior border of teres major, it changes names to the axillary vein. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. Okay. We can't see it here, but we have some fascia, some brachial fascia. Remember, the axillary vein is deep, okay? The basilic vein is superficial. It's one of the two superficial veins in the brachium, the other being this one, the cephalic vein. So in order for the basilic vein to become the axillary vein, it has to penetrate deeper because basilic, by definition, is superficial. So right around this point right here where we have the inferior border of teres major, the basilic vein is going to penetrate the fascia, the brachial fascia. And once it goes through that fascia, it's then the axillary vein. So not only does the basilic vein become the axillary vein uh, when it gets to the inferior border of the teres major, but it has to cross through that fascia to go from being superficial to being deep. Okay, So hopefully that makes sense. So once again, the basilic vein is draining the medial aspect of the upper extremity travels up here, crosses through this brachial fascia at about the level of the inferior border of teres major. It goes deeper and becomes axillary vein, which travels up here. And then once it gets to this uh, lateral border of the anterior uh, surface of the first rib, it becomes the subclavian vein. And then that will become the brachiocephalic vein and take blood back to the right atrium of the heart. Okay. So that is the basilic vein right here, and then this is the axillary vein. You'll also notice that there's a couple brachial veins right here. So the brachial artery, which exists below the teres major muscle, of course, the brachial artery doesn't have one main brachial vein. It has a couple smaller paired brachial veins. Those brachial veins will empty into the basilic vein, as you see right here. So they don't actually empty into the axillary vein. They actually dump directly into the basilic vein, which then, of course, becomes the axillary vein. So hopefully that makes sense. Right here, this vein, which is also superficial, this is the cephalic vein, which we've talked about in previous videos. So while the basilic vein drains the medial part of the brachium, the elbow, and the forearm, the cephalic vein drains the lateral part of the brachium, the elbow, and the forearm. Okay? So here's our cephalic vein. It's superficial, and it pretty much remains superficial until it gets to this region right here. If you remember from previous videos, I'll actually go back to this slide right here, there was a space here between the deltoid and the pectoralis major. This is the clavicular head of pec major. This space is called the clavipectoral triangle or the deltopectoral triangle. Remember that this is the cephalic vein. It actually has to go through that gap, and then it actually has to pierce the clavipectoral fascia to get to the axillary vein. Again, remember, the clavipectoral fascia separates the superficial structures from the deep structures. 
So cephalic vein is superficial, so it's going to have to pass through that fascia to gain access to the deeper axillary vein. So here's our cephalic vein going up. It's going to cross through that clavipectoral triangle or deltopectoral triangle, and right around here is going to be that clavipectoral fascia. It's going to have to pierce that to gain access to dump into the axillary vein. Okay? And then, of course, we talked about the axillary vein becomes a subclavian vein, and then that becomes brachiocephalic vein, and that returns blood back to the right atrium of the heart. So the basilic vein right here, the cephalic vein, and the axillary vein, these are really the major drainage points of the arm. It's kind of odd that a huge component of the drainage is actually superficial. I find that really strange. But ultimately, they do drain back into the axillary vein, which indirectly takes blood back to the heart. Yes, we do have a bunch of deeper veins that do drain into these. Like For example, this vein right here that's coming through the quadrangular space, this is likely the posterior humeral circumflex vein that's going with the posterior circumflex humeral artery. It drains back into the axillary vein. These ones right here that are coming from the triangular interval, uh, these are probably profunda brachii veins. So just like the brachial veins down here, the profunda brachii veins are also in a pair, and they appear to drain directly into the axillary vein. Paired brachial veins are deeper, they drain into the basilic vein. So the point is, is that we have a bunch of other drainage points here uh, for specific parts of the brachium, but the major drainage points are going to be the cephalic vein, the basilic vein, and then the axillary vein right here. Okay? So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the venous drainage of the brachium. In the next video, we're going to look a little bit more at the nerves and how they travel down the brachium and ultimately cross the elbow into, into the forearm. And this is going to prime us for talking about the forearm musculature. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.